guys, welcome back to my channel and if you're new here, my name is Tamika and in today's video I am going to be doing a review on the L'Oreal True Match Foundation. Now this foundation is nowhere near new, but here in Australia they have just expanded their shade range. There are now 40 in total and I finally have a shade. I have been testing this out for a while now and I am super excited to share my thoughts with you. I'll show you some swatch comparisons and include a demo. So give this video a thumbs up if you're pumped and let's get into it. Okay, let's start with the facts. You should all know how I work around here by now. For your information, my skin type is combo. I get a little oily throughout the T-zone, but then a few dry patches on breakouts, things like that. Now this is your standard foundation size. It comes with 30 mils and it retails for $29.95 here in Australia. So you can pick this up from Priceline or Chemist Warehouse but always keep an eye out for sales, especially at Chemist Warehouse. As I mentioned, it now comes in 40 shades and my shade is the lightest, 0.5N. The shades are all numbered and then they have a letter at the end indicating their undertone. So N for neutral, C for cool, or W for warm. 0.5 only comes in neutral and cool, but then the next shade up one comes in all three undertones. On the L'Oreal website, it doesn't describe what the finish or the coverage is like. It just says it's a super blendable foundation that perfectly matches the color and texture of your skin, hiding imperfections with its creamy texture, resulting in a flawless coverage. In my opinion, it has a medium buildable coverage and it leaves a really nice natural finish that leaves the skin looking fresh and glowy. I actually really enjoy the finish of this foundation. It's not too dewy, but it's enough to give you that beautiful everyday natural look. It feels really lightweight on the skin and even when I go in with a second layer, it doesn't build up and feel heavy and cakey at all. When it comes to primers, I did find I got a better result using a pore filling primer, especially around my nose and just on the sides here, as I did find it was settling into some of my larger pores. The rest of my face though, it looked fine and I didn't feel like I needed a specific primer. Longevity on this one is pretty average. It's definitely not a long lasting formula on me. I found that after around seven hours is when it was starting to fade away on my chin and a little bit around my nose. I've actually been testing it out, wearing it to work and it has been hot, really hot. My mustache has been sweating like crazy and it does come off there. But as for the rest of my face, it does stay put. I just look a little shiny at the end of the day, but nothing too crazy and oily looking. If I were to wear this foundation on a normal temperature day, say like 20 to 25 degrees, I think it would last really well. But it's been like 30 to 35 here lately and the humidity, Oh God, the humidity has been through the roof. So although it's not the best at withstanding these conditions, it is doing a pretty good job. If you have dry skin, I think this foundation would look pretty good on you. Oily skin, mm, depending on how oily you are, you may be able to get away with it. If you have either of these skin types and have tried out the foundation, can you leave a comment down below so that everyone can have a read and suss it out? All right, well, let's get into the demo and I can explain a few more things. Okay, so the foundation comes in a nice sleek glass bottle and it has a pump, which we're all here for. Now, I'm not going to color correct any of my redness because I want you to be able to see what the coverage is actually like. I'm going to start out with two pumps of foundation. Now, this formula is quite liquidy. As you can see, it runs down the palette quickly. I just like to use my finger to spread that over my face. And I don't know what's come over me, but I'm really enjoying blending out my foundation with a sponge. And this isn't even a beauty blender. This is the EcoTool sponge, which is a bit more dense, but I really like it. I like what's happened. I never, ever, ever used to like blending my foundation out with a sponge. I don't know. Okay, so that's one side with the sponge. Now I would say that is light coverage for sure. I'm going to do the other side with a brush just to show you how it goes. Okay. 
So it leaves a similar coverage, but I do still need to go over it with my sponge to get rid of any little streak marks that were left. All right, so this is what one layer looks like blended out. So I'm going to go in with another pump. Oh. oh my God, that just splashed foundation onto my friend's shirt. No. So I feel like that second layer really does it for me. The coverage is much better and it even sits really nicely on top of my breakouts. So around my mouth here, I've got a few that are kind of scabby and it's just sitting really nicely on top. It's not dry and clinging to them. And here is what the foundation looks like with my makeup completed. Okay, so starting down the end here, I've swatched the lightest six shades of the L'Oreal True Match. So this one here is 1.5N. Here we have 1N, 1W, and 1C. This here is 0.5C and 0.5N, which is the shade I use today. Next, I have the NYX Can't Stop, Won't Stop in Light Porcelain and porcelain. This here is the Maybelline Fit Me in 110 and this is the Maybelline Superstay in 110. All right, well that is all I have to say for this one. If you are on the market for a healthy, fresh looking foundation that still looks like skin, then I think this is the one for you. I hope you enjoyed watching. If you did, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you're new here and I will see you all in the next one. Bye.